Howdy folks, howdy, Sean Brock here with you. You've been looking for me on milk cartons or something, I guess. <clears throat> I'm over here with a frog. Anyway, uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so. So there's this old uh, cheapskate fellow who uh, asks me, he said, what do you, what's the difference between Elixir and those Diodario XS? And he's a tightwad, you know. Raymond Welsh type, you know, kind of puts a quarter in the authoring plate. And he uh, he asked me that, and I tried to describe them, and I said, well, you know, I haven't played, I haven't actually put a set of Elixir on a guitar since uh, about March of 2021. So we're, we're booking in on a year and a half. So I thought it would be good because... Times change, things change, and uh, during the course of my time of playing Diodario XS strings, I feel like they've changed in their short lifespan. Um, I thought it would be interesting just to go ahead and compare these. So we've got a really good set of Diodario XS 17s on my uh, signature model, Jimmy Edmonds here, Mahogany and Red Spruce. And I'm going to play a couple of things, and we'll put on a set of elixirs, brand new. And I'm going to edit all this together so we can listen to these two different sets of strings back to back. And you can make up your own mind, and there will be some gom. That's a southern term for you. What is a gom? Uh, well, let's see. If your sump pump goes out and it comes a big rain and your basement floods, that's a gom. Uh, GOM can also be an individual, which we will undoubtedly see here, the kind of individual who uh, is approximately 46 years of age, lives in his basement, and is hollering up right now to get his mommy to make him a sandwich while he's watching this video and trying to play Fortnite at the same time. They'll get on here, that, that type of GOM, and say, uh, I, don't, I don't like coded strings, and I don't know why you guys use them. Well, this is not for people who don't, I, I don't care what your opinion of coded strings is because uh, guess what? I don't own stock in a string manufacturer, so what, it makes no difference to me. I'm glad to hear what people like or don't like or use um, because I'm always looking to learn something. But, you know, there's I don't care if you don't like coded strings. Why, why would that? You know, this is, this is a coded strings video. Go watch something else. Anyway, that GOM will show up. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and forewarn you. But we're going to try these out. We'll go in alphabetical order, basically. We'll go Diodario and then Elixir. Okay? And I'll do my best to play exactly the same. So let's concern ourselves mostly with the top four strings. But let's play the open strings first. And we'll get this underway for us and the gong.
sound quality uh, because there's so many things that are subjective to uh, what you like I mean it, you know there's there's merits to everything and it's all subjective and obviously it's subjective to the guitar you put them on um, I will tell you uh, I don't do bad reviews of products there was a, a company that asked me about doing a review on a coated string they had and I tried them and they were so bad that uh, I told them no I told them no thanks thank you please go away don't go away don't go away mad just go away but um, so here I'm going to tell you the positives and the negatives in my experience starting with the excess uh, I first got these even before they came on the market I got a few sets and I really, really liked them. I thought they lasted like a crazy amount of time. Matter of fact, uh, a guitar I owned, uh, I, I put a brand new set on it in July of last year. I played that guitar every day, a bunch, a ton. And I finally decided I'm going to see how long these will last before they don't intonate right or something and uh, in January I sold that guitar and out of courtesy to the buyer I went ahead and changed the strings on it but those weren't to the end of their life uh, having said that uh, we get an opportunity to put on a lot of excess strings uh, as you may know that's what we try to put on all the guitars for the videos so it makes it easier for you to compare from guitar to guitar if they have the same strings on them uh, and sometimes you know it might not be the correct the most optimal string or whatever but uh, so be it we try to have as many apples to apples as we can and during this time I have noticed uh, and I wrote Diodario about this I have noticed that the coating tends to come off easier. I've also noticed that the uh, on a lot of sets the top the base E is not nearly as bright as it used to be and I plainly asked is there a change in the formula Has something been reworked they said no uh, I'm not calling them liars they make the strings I don't I just know that we have probably had no joke no exaggeration 80 or more sets of excess strings come through here and I felt uh, much more positive in the beginning than I do now now I feel like it's hit and miss and I told another guy I said you know the sets that had the sticker in them seemed like they were better they lasted longer they had a brighter they maintain a, a, a brighter sound for a longer period and that could be imagination on my part so I'm not trying to run down Diodario and of course you know we are d deep up into summer and heat could play a uh, you know during transportation heat could play into uh, the coating on on these types of strings so Elixir, I started using Elixir sometime in the late 90s, I want to say 97, 98, uh, kind of around their beginning stages. 
and I started uses, using those and used them faithfully. Uh, the NanoWeb medium, I'd used both the uh, 8020 and then when they put out their uh, newer phosphor bonds, I used those as well. And I used those from about 97, 98, all the way up until uh, March of last year, of 2021, when the excess came out. And I'm, I'm not putting anybody's strings down, but the, the offerings encoded that Diodario had made prior to that uh, just didn't seem to hold up to my body chemistry uh, as well as Elixir did. Um, my contention, why did I switch over in the first place? Well, I like to try new things, especially if they're good products. Um, but I'd ran into an issue where a lot of the G's on Elixirs were fraying really quickly, really quickly. Um, kind of like the problem I'm starting to see in Diodario now. Uh, the D was also fraying very quickly. I wasn't getting a lot of time out of a set on those. Um, the G, in my opinion, has always been somewhat delicate. Uh, I used to actually save G's out of G's and D's out of sets when I would change my strings because I've been in recording sessions and a string a G would break and I would have to restring the whole guitar. Um, you know, because you would have strings that were kind of part broken, and, and here you were going to have this new string that sticks out. And the G on these sticks out pretty bad when you first put them on. As, you know, it's just real, it's a little, it's a little metallic to me. And that goes away pretty quick. But, um, so, I mean, that doesn't bother me none, because it does go away. But uh, when you're doing a recording session, you don't want that. So I used to save the old G's, and I would sub one in if one broke. Um, but I never really broke very many of them. But it just seemed if something was going to go wrong, it would be the G. And I had gotten uh, a, couple of, a couple of sets of elixirs that were not even coated. Somebody did not even coat them. Uh, I got a couple of sets where the ball was loose and rattling. Uh, you know, the winding around by the ball was loose, brand new. And I said, you know what? I've had enough of this crap for $16 a set or whatever they were, $15 a set back then. Actually, I think they were uh, 13 something. And now they've went up like everything else. So I switched over to the Diodarios. But it's, it's a totally different tone, and uh, I can't tell you that I prefer one over another. I can't tell you these days if some of the uh, problems I faced are still going on at Elixir. I know that this was a set that I got, and I got it out, and I haven't seen any problems with it so far. It all seems on the up and up. Um, I don't know how long the coating will last. But, uh, so, uh, for that GOM who hates coated strings, I guess this is probably the end of the video. And we've got a whole big bunch of stuff coming up. A bunch of guitars coming in, uh, here this week. And I hope that, uh, at least, hey, you got to hear, uh, uh, whatever. Close to 40 bucks worth of strings compared. And you can decide if you want to try something out or not or stick with whatever you uh, normally stick with because uh, I paid I paid for these so that uh, cheapskate wouldn't have to <laughs> anyway thank you all for watching and uh, like I say please subscribe if you haven't done so take care